Hi, everyone. We're excited to share with you this presentation on building a culture of data use with a focus on equity. I'm Kate Grandman, and I'm a TA provider for the Center for IDEA Early Childhood Data Systems, or DAISY. I have experience working at the state level, as well as providing technical assistance, primarily focused on early childhood special education, data use, and data integration. Hi, my name is Sherry Franklin, and I am a technical assistance specialist with the DAISY Center as well for almost six years. I'm a previous Part C coordinator and have worked in the field of early intervention and early childhood close to 30 years. <laughs> I'm also on topical teams that support states to use high quality data in the areas of accountability systems, child and family outcomes data collection, and a myriad of other topics. I look forward to our work at the DAISY Center to continue to support, support states to ensure equitable outcomes for all children and their families. Hi, and I am Cindy Weigel, and I am new to the DAISY Center um, since the beginning of this year. And previously, I was a Part C state coordinator along with a monitoring and compliance consultant for about 12 years, and have spent about three decades working with um, children young children and their families in many different early childhood capacities. And I am very happy to be here with you today. So we'll get started with our content. Uh, a quick note before we get started. We just wanna note that this session is not intended to be completely exhaustive of considerations related to data and equity data or equity, um, neither or both of those things uh, not intended to be exhaustive. So we recognize that this is a critically important and very nuanced issue. Um, we just hope that this session sparks your thinking and provides you with resources to start or continue using data to promote equity in early intervention and early childhood special education. We're gonna go through the session outcomes. So during this session, we will define elements of a strong data use culture, examine what it means to be a data leader, explore how to effectively engage diverse stakeholders, and provide resources to help you assess and improve your data use culture. We will start by discussing what equity means, what it looks like in early childhood, and how early childhood data use can play a role in efforts to promote equity. Thank you, Kate. First, we'd like to acknowledge that we will be using a variety of terms and concepts throughout our conversation today. We want to create a shared language for this session as it is important to have a common vocabulary to avoid misunderstandings and misinterpretations. Therefore, we have provided you a list of terms or core concepts and their definitions. We hope this information will help you to engage with the content of this presentation. So let's begin with the question, why is it important to center equity in the culture of data use in early childhood programs? We define equity as the state, quality, or ideal of being just, impartial, and fair. The concept of equity is synonymous with fairness and justice. Centering equity is not a single discrete step. This is ongoing work and needs to be thought of as a systemic and structural concept. So how does this relate to early childhood data? Effective use of Part C and Part B619 data is fundamental to the achievement of positive outcomes for infants, toddlers, and preschoolers with disabilities and their families. Data use provides the lever for knowing how to alter programs to improve outcomes for children and their families. But these data are not objective or neutral. While numbers and figures may be neutral in and of themselves, data are collected analyze, interpret it, and distribute it by people. People who bring to their work their lived experiences, beliefs, and potential biases. The purpose of centering equity within a culture of data use is to be deliberate and inclusive as an organization that uses data to make decisions and focuses on equity in both their processes and outcomes. 
But if the process isn't implemented effectively to acknowledge the complexities of how humans and data interact, then you won't have a full understanding of inequities in your program or system. So now Kate is going to lead us in a conversation about, about centering equity in a culture of data use. We'll start by defining what we're talking about when we say culture of data use. Could be something you've never heard before. Some of you may be familiar with the topic, um, but it's something that's actually not very easy to define. Um, it's all about how a program or an organization functions. So it's really embedded in everything that people do. It's not something that's part of a single initiative where one day you have a culture of data use or one day you don't have one and then the next day you do. It's really something that should be established across an entire organization very intentionally um, and nurtured over time. We're gonna organize this presentation around seven key elements of data use culture that were developed based on research conducted in the field of education. The elements are commitment, vision, beliefs, accountability, collaboration, modeling, and ongoing commitment to instructional and programmatic improvement. These first three elements are foundational for defining goals and establishing your culture of data use. First, talking just about commitment and vision. All key stakeholders must be committed to using data for continuous improvement and prioritizing meaningful data use. Programs should also articulate a clear vision for data use. The vision may include things like the purposes for which data are used, goals for data use practices, and details about how data are communicated. The vision should also include specific information about how data will be used to support equity. It may also include a shared vocabulary to talk about equity and name the program's commitment to embedding equity into their work across all levels. Getting this commitment and co-creating a vision for data use may require honest conversations with program staff about the role the program can play in upholding or remediating inequities among young children with disabilities and their families. Once staff acknowledge the program's potential influence, you can start talking about what kinds of changes in processes and stakeholder particip participation the program needs to make sure its culture of data use has a strong focus on equity. In thinking about what these conversations might look like, um, you might need to reflect on the current decision-making environment. Who has authority? Whose voices are being heard? How committed is leadership to meaningfully engaging stakeholders in data use processes? When doing this vision setting with stakeholders, engagement must go beyond who is at the table. Simply having a diverse group of stakeholders isn't enough. You must work towards their active engagement and participation in building the program's vision for using data to support equity. Engagement from the beginning also sets the tone for how stakeholders can expect to be involved in the data use process moving forward. The third foundational element is having a shared set of beliefs. Staff and stakeholders must believe that data can and should be used for program improvement. In the field of early childhood, there has been a shift from using data as a hammer, for example, in a punitive way or for compliance purposes only, to using data as a flashlight, using data to investigate and explore new ideas and ask questions. Getting program staff on board with this shift can open the door to a stronger focus on using data to plan program improvement activities. We know in early childhood special education and early intervention, there are a lot of uh, data that are required to be reported. So you really kind of need to think outside the box and think about what other questions you might wanna ask about your communities and about the children and families that are being served um, so that you don't kind of get stuck in that focus on compliance and required reporting only. So before you start trying to implement changes to data use practices, these foundational elements, commitment, vision, and beliefs really need to be in place. Everyone needs to be on the same page and on board with this idea of um, effective use of data, using programmatic data to action plan and make real decisions about programs. 
And this brings us to our fourth element, which is accountability. As you're developing the vision and reflecting on how your program currently uses data, you should begin to identify opportunities to change data use practices to promote equity. People at multiple levels of your organization must be held accountable for adhering to the changes in practice that have been developed to support the program vision. These practices may include new meeting protocols to better hear the voices of your stakeholders, or a new practice like ensuring staff consider disaggregated data by a minimum of race, ethnicity, gender, and disability or eligibility categories. Without disaggregating data by subgroups, analysis can unintentionally gloss over inequity and lead to invisible experiences. So let's look at some real data. This is data from a program which has implemented a new practice to improve children's social emotional development. We have data on the left for the business as usual program, where you see little change in social emotional development between the two years. And then on the right are data from the site where the new practice has been used. Looking at the chart on the right, you might interpret that the new practice has had a positive impact between those two years on the children it served because of that upward slope. And then when analyzing data for equity in mind, you can look deeper into the results of the new practice and you find a different story. If group one is children who are white, group two is black or African-American, and group three is American Indian, your practice has created an equity issue. The graph on the right shows the new program is far more effective with one group than it is for the other two. So keep in mind that when you do not disaggregate your data, the majority will dominate the analysis and you will not know about the experience of all groups of children. These experiences become invisible. Through further analysis and interpretation with your group of stakeholders, actions would be different after looking at the disaggregated data that's on the right-hand side of the screen. With change often comes resistance. Building the time, space, and support for these kinds of activities to ensure that staff can succeed is part of building a strong culture of data use. Highlight the impact of effective data use on outcomes for your children and families served in your programs. Be open about and accountable for the impact of your programs uh, on inequities and outcomes. Build a culture of inquiry around your staff and stakeholders. Highlight the importance of efforts to achieve equity across all aspects of your work, not just when you're looking at your data. This may help program staff remain dedicated to the change that results from building a stronger culture of data use. And we'll move to the fifth element, which is collaboration. Organizations must value collaboration between staff and stakeholders. And more importantly though, you must create the space for uh, collaboration to happen. Collaboration should go beyond just one-way information sharing. It should involve co-creation of ideas and plans throughout the data use process. From a culture perspective, you should seek to build an environment in which people feel comfortable asking questions and exploring new ideas with data and encouraging and equipped to use data beyond required reporting. What collaboration can look like in a culture of data use is directly involving staff and stakeholders in many aspects of using data for making changes. It allows you to learn not only diverse perspectives, it can also provide new insights to help you make sense of the findings from your data and create relevant actions to address change. It allows you to make a more informed decision. Decisions are limited when perspectives are limited. You want a powerful mix of stakeholders to help leverage change. Additionally, including stakeholders such as practitioners and families who are on the front lines of your daily program life, lets them know that you value their perspective, it helps to build trust, improves your accountability, and it also increases their understanding and commitment to the actions that result from the data use process. The more you engage people in data, the more they build their comfort and skills with data, and the stronger your data culture will be. And next, Sherry is gonna to talk to us about the element of modeling. 
Another key element of a culture of data use is modeling behavior. By modeling data-informed decision-making processes, leaders allow staff to actually see the importance of data-driven decision-making. This is especially critical when it comes to promoting a focus on equity. When we talk about leaders, we are not just referencing those who are in positions of authority. We believe that anyone can be a data leader. The way a leader frames data use efforts and models data use processes directly influences which data are prioritized, how data are used, and for what purposes. Leaders should acknowledge that people filter data based on their experiences and backgrounds and model how to name and be open about the impact of these experiences on their interpretation or use of data. We are going to explore five strategies that data leaders use to model behaviors that inform data informed decision making. We are certain that there are many other strategies, so please add along with me. First, leaders provide regular time and space to foster a learning community among administrators and staff to discuss equity. It includes opportunities for all individuals to reflect about their own cultural attitudes and behaviors, as well as to uncover and change actions that re reflect implicit biases and microaggressions, perhaps, towards children, families, school, or program staff and administrators. Leaders create forums where data is used to inform deep discussions and debated by multiple voices and diverse stakeholder input. This is critical to allow for different perspectives when discussing data and making decisions. Data leaders are thoughtful about assembling a data team. They consider the expertise needed and who are the specific members of data teams as leaders believe that value is added by each individual team member. It is an environment where different lived experiences and diverse backgrounds are valued and seen as assets to teams and to the organization. Data leaders believe in distributed leadership Data leaders are not possessive about data or their responsibilities. They believe in supporting others to be leaders. Leaders motivate others to lead and contribute to decision-making to shift power dynamics among teams. And lastly, data leaders understand that resources are required to collect high quality data and they must be thoughtful about allocating such resources. An example is how leaders shift fiscal resources so that they are distributed to address any inequity that are identified. So Cindy is now going to share the final element of a data use, of a data use culture. Thank you, Sherry. So the last element is commitment to ongoing instructional and program improvements. We discussed that staff must see the value in using data, but they also must be open to changing policies and practices based on what they learn. As programs open their culture for more collaborative and more honesty about equity, they can use data to determine what program changes need to be made to address issues of equity. We hope that by building a strong culture around data use, that your program will be primed to welcome meaningful changes to programs and services that address inequities, leading to better services for all children in, uh, with disabilities and their families. We would like to leave you with a few recommended resources that focus on engaging stakeholders, assessing and improving your data use culture, prioritizing questions, and the connection between data leadership and equity. Links to these resources can be found in the handout for this presentation. Thank you so much for participating in this session. We look forward to engaging with you about this topic during the conference's roundtable discussions.